Hiya, Kiki here, and today I am going to show you the new Minecraft Hour of Code tutorial. I am so excited. So this actually releases tonight at 11 p.m. Pacific time, and I'm just going to give you a little uh, preview as to what it is all about. If you did the one last year, this one's completely different. The premise is that uh, the Minecraft world is broken and things aren't working and we have to go fix them by putting the right code in the right object. So in this case, uh, the chicken is frozen and we need to place the move and turn blocks inside the when spawn slot to get it to move. So here we go. And you'll see, you just click run when you're ready and you'll be able to try your program. Here we have the chicken and right now it's not doing anything. It's just frozen and we have to say, hey chicken, when you spawn, we want you to do certain things. This block belongs to the chicken, and this little cove here is what happens when the chicken is spawned. And so this is, it wants us to put a move and turn block in here. And we're gonna do that, and we're also gonna play a sound. And, you know, we should probably play chicken cluck, but this is Minecraft, and even more, we're coding Minecraft, so we can do whatever we want. So I'm gonna have a cow moo, and not just a regular moo, but a moo. Here we go. Nice. Now we'll click run and see what happens. Very nice. Here we go. We're gonna continue. And in the next level, we kind of build on that. So the chicken moved, but then she stopped. And in games, chickens kind of they, they do the same code and they do it forever. So we are going to use a forever do loop to keep the chickens moving. Now, in the same little area here, when spawned, we're gonna put a forever do loop in there and we want it to move and turn every iteration and we'll click run. Awesome, it's working beautifully. Now, we go into the next one and it's kind of strange to have the chickens all moving like they're swimming in synchronization. So we are going to add some randomness in there. And when we're building games, all the chickens can use the exact same code, but if we use a random block or a random option on a block, then it gives this feeling that they're each doing their own thing, even when they're doing something very, very similar. So we are going to, we still have the chicken and the wins bond, and we're gonna take that forever do loop, but we're gonna add a, a random turn in there. So now they'll each turn whichever way they feel like it. Some might turn the same way, some might turn a different way. Then we're gonna have a move a bit, and then we're gonna have them uh, wait a random amount. And this is gonna make it so that instead of them all moving and turning at the same time, even in different directions, now that first time they'll move and turn at the same time but after that they'll wait and they'll uh, kind of add a little more variety to how they move around it'll look much more natural here we go so this first time they're in synchronization and after that they kind of start to fall out of sync and look a little more like chickens wandering around all right next Okay, here we get to now use our character and our character is going to help us through the rest of the game. And I'm gonna choose Alex. Alex is gonna come with me and help me explore the world. And uh, first we're gonna take a little tutorial how to move Alex around. We're gonna use the arrow keys and we use a space bar to use something. So when we bump into something, that's touching it. But if we actually wanna use it, we need to press the space bar once we're there. So in this case, we need to get to the door. Ah, funny. Okay, so now we're going to move Alex around using these arrow keys. That's awesome. And now she's banging her head into the door because she's touching it, she's not using it. So in order to use it, we're going to press the space bar and that will open up the door and we can walk through it. All right, I opened the door. Next, here we go. So in Minecraft, sheep drop wool and we are going to place the drop block in the when used slot for the sheep and then walk over and use the sheep to have it drop an item. So 
here's that sheep block, which is very similar to the chicken block, only it's for sheep. And instead of being when spawned, which would mean when you press run or when it appears on the screen, we're gonna do a when used, which as I described earlier, means when you walk up to it and press the space bar or click on it. Uh, now, when used, we want it to drop something. So we're going to put drop wool. <laughs> I don't think so. We're gonna have it drop a bucket of lava because that's what sheep do in my world. So here we go. We are gonna run. We're gonna walk up to the sheep and we can, oops, if you uh, walk into it too vigorously, it'll run away. So walk up to it and then you can use it by clicking it or pressing the space bar. And I just got a bucket of lava for free. That's what coding will do for you. Next level. So now the cows are lost and we need to lead them to the grass with a move a step toward block in a forever do loop. The uh, tendency here is gonna be just to use a move a step toward player block and use it once and not put it in a loop. But then the cows will only come a step near you and then they'll just stop again. It's really frustrating. So if you want them to keep coming until they get to you, you need to use a loop. So you'll see that now we have this cow that was very loud music we have this cow block which is similar to the sheep block or the chicken block but it's for a cow that's right very good um and now we actually have multiple codes multiple slots where we can have this this cow do things so the first is when the cow is spawned it could do something just automatically when you click run when the cow is touched so if you go up to it and bonk it like I did earlier, uh, it'll do one thing. And then when used or clicked, it'll do something else. And in this case, it already has drop milk in there for you. So uh, we want it so that once we touch that cow, it is gonna walk towards us forever. So we'll put that forever loop in and we'll have it move toward us. You can have it move toward sheep, but there's no sheep there. Uh, oh, some hints of other things to come. Isn't that fun? We're going to keep it with player. And you know what? When it spawns, I'm going to have it play. Um, you know what? We had our chicken moo. Let's have our cow cluck. So we're going to have it play a cluck sound when we start. Then it's going to move towards us. And then when we use it, it's going to drop some milk. Here it goes. So in order to activate that code that we put in, we have to go up and touch the cow and see now it's following me. And there's that one following me. And I have to make sure that I don't get them stuck. There we go. There we go. And now if I had had time to turn around and use the cow, I could have had them drop milk, but uh, the timer makes it so that pretty much once you get them in that pasture, you're good to go. You can use them before they get into the grass. That's perfectly fine. All right, so now you've learned pretty much everything you need to know to be successful doing this tutorial on your own. You know what this block is for. This one's for the creeper. You know what each of these little coves are for. This one is for when spawned, when touched, when used. You might or might not see other coves come to pass uh, as you go through the levels. And all you have to do is read what they're for and experiment a little bit and you'll know exactly where to put things. Uh, then you put the code in that you need and you make it happen. I am not gonna do this one for you. It is a fun one to figure out on your own. In fact, from here on out, it gets very creative. It's very satisfying. And I challenge you to go through and do them yourself. Go ahead and if you feel like posting in comments below, let me know what your favorite puzzle was. Uh, if you wanna put your creative solution to one of the puzzles, feel free to do that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time, happy coding.